Hi everyone, I am um, Aaron Enigma in Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to everyone. Uh, I am a member of the bar ballroom community, um, specifically the Midwest, because um, that's where I discovered ballroom. Um, and I discovered ballroom through voguing. Uh, I discovered the dance first before I discovered that there was a whole community that it stemmed from. Okay, so tonight I was on uh, one of the Facebook groups and I saw an interview from Kevin Ultra Omni um, that was very, so on point. I really appreciate him. As a matter of fact, when I started trying to bridge the gap between Chicago and the New York Mecca of ballroom, he was one of the first people that um, I reached out to. I was able to interview him for a magazine that we had going on here in Chicago before I later on branched off and started my own magazine um, because I felt like the magazine I was working for needed or probably couldn't fulfill the niche of covering the ball community in depth or as much as a spinoff could have which is where I saw the need and I took, stepped in and took that took the reign of that okay so what I want to make this video about is that over the phrase about pioneer so um, Kai Balmain was interviewing Kevin about the phrase pioneer and uh, how it's attached to the icon title of some people in New York. And I think, I think he gave a wonderful explanation of why that is used. I want to add, I want to supplement what he said to talk about outside of the New York ballroom so that people can understand what the pioneer phrase, how that fits into context, okay? We all know that New York is the is ballroom central for our culture, okay? Now, as other cities outside of New York started trying to become part of the circuit, see now ballroom is worldwide, okay? We're talking Russia and Japan and, and all these things. But earlier on, there was a struggle just to develop ballroom outside the New York City era. So one of the points that Kevin was talking about, I appreciate him saying how hard it was and how people took risks to even keep the ballroom alive. I mean, just that part alone of him talking about people foregoing their rent to invest in the ballroom. And I, I've always heard Kevin talk about ballroom economy. A lot of people slight him for that, but the ballroom is an economy. And it is fantasy on some level, but it is also realness because the fact of that you have to pay for a, sp a space to throw these events. You have to hire security to make sure that everyone has a good time and everyone's safe. Um, all these things, these are realities. You have a reality foundation so that people can have a fantasy evening. Let's put it like that. All right. So what I'm trying to say is, is that the phrase pioneering in terms outside of New York refers to the fact that once ballroom started spreading outside of the New York era area, there are people, key people that are, are in various cities that were adopting the New York format of ball. See, that's another thing I'm glad Kevin brought up because there's a distinction from when the, the era of balls, when it was more geared towards drag queens, and then they started developing houses. That was a big switch in the, in the timeline of history. Okay, so Chicago in particular, that's where I'm from, or that's where I've been residing uh, the longest. Um, and specific to us, we had the drag balls, as most major cities 
had drag balls and these drag balls go way back okay um and a lot of it is not documented because especially like even like in the 20s when i mean with the just with dress code laws um i mean mardi gras down in in, in new orleans had gotten banned for maybe like a span of 10 or 15 years back and i'll say like in the 1800s because there was so much debauchery going on and since people were masked and costumed and, and camouflaged, they couldn't identify perpetrators. So they stopped Mardi Gras for years, at least a decade. And then finally someone got it re restarted. Okay, but I'm trying to get start getting off uh, track a little bit. But what I'm trying to say, I use that as an example to show that Drag balls have been going on in major cities outside of New York for the longest time. What we, our community, considers ballroom, meaning the Harlem Renaissance ballroom format, is the induction of house structure and also judging structure. Because in the old drag balls, people used to walk across a stage and the audience would be, you know, it basically would be a party going on. And at some point they would stop the party to judge uh, people's costumes, outfits, presentations or whatever. And there were a limited number of prizes given out. Well, there was another change. Once they developed houses, now I can't attest to what came first, but during the time they developed the idea of houses, because prior to that, you were drag personalities or femme queens. I don't even, the phrase femme, femme queens wasn't even being used at that time. That's a whole nother story. And I'm sure Kevin and other people can touch on that. But <clears throat> we'll say at these drag balls, they weren't houses. They were individual people w walking and making a name for themselves and having people that were um, fans a camp of followers, supporters, that eventually became their entourage. And just somebody had the idea of, let's call these little entourages houses. All right. So let's go be, get back to the pioneer thing. The pioneer thing that I want to speak of is outside the New York area regarding the Harlem drag ball, voguing and houses, that type of ball it was hard for other cities to make the transition to adopt that format that was going on in New York I know for a fact because of Chicago I was one of the people that helped develop it in Chicago Chicago already had drag balls going on they had been going on they were really big in the 30s um, when, that's when a lot of white people were going to the black jazz clubs on the south side. They were having these functions at uh, like hotel ballrooms, um, whatever, because you have to realize that the true ballrooms like dancing and, 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 and assembling people for masquerades and things like that, a lot of the ballrooms in Chicago were up north. And they were segregated. Black people could not go to dances at the Aragon, the 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 Uptown, or not the Uptown. What's that one? Yeah, I think it is the Uptown because they have never reopened that. Um, a lot of these ballrooms that are still around on the North Side, um, and so a lot of black. So like, what was going on in New York with Harlem? Harlem was a place where there was a lot of creativity, a lot of art, um, but it was, it was emanating from the black community. And this drew people outside the ballroom community. So you, you outside of the arts and entertainment community, the black arts and entertainment community, I would say. So just as people were drawn to Harlem, non-blacks, so like your white people, uh, your creative people, pretty much they drew um, it was more integrated for them in uh, Harlem 
with people coming to congregate there. In Chicago, similar thing is like, because black people couldn't go to certain areas of town, white people could pretty much go anywhere. And there were some people daring enough to go and party, congregate, celebrate with black people. And this usually happened in black South Side working class communities. And so that is also where these drag balls were taking place. Um, a little known fact is that um, in a city such as Chicago, with its pretty segregated history, um, let's see, with its pretty much segregated history, black fraternal orders, uh, like in New York, I guess you got the Elks Lodge and things like that. But in Chicago, I, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, lodges were, but the black fraternal lodges were some of the only places that would rent space so that gay people, predominantly drag, could get together and have functions, okay? Now, the reason I bring that up is because so, so since we already had in Chicago, long time, long with the same around the same time, this stuff was going on in New York with drag balls. You know, in New York they had the Phil Black and um, some other name that Kevin had brought up. But in Chicago, I say around the 30s, started the Alfred Finney area era with the Alfred Finney Club balls, and then they. Uh, started getting challenged later on in the 70s by the Jacques Christian and the Dodie Daniel balls. But these still were drag balls. And straight people used to come to these functions. Um, I've run across people who know of this era or they know their parents used to go to, to these, these functions, but it's really hard to get anybody to open up it because this is a painful time for some people, okay? Because you think back in it, the, pop, the gay population in prison was so high because once upon a time it was illegal to be gay. Get in. Okay, get in. Anyway, so rambling, but the whole pioneer thing, I'm getting back to pioneering. Outside of the New York area, as far as ballroom goes, pioneer refers to people who um, I actually came up with that phrase to designate people outside of the New York area who were instrumental in getting the Harlem ballroom format adapted in their cities. Because again, I said already there were drag balls already going on in your, a lot of your major cities, especially if it was a port city, which Chicago being in the Midwest, it used to be, uh, well, it's still, we're by a lake. Um, and uh, we got Navy Pier and whatever, I think like that. I think um, one Queen of England even like landed at Navy Pier years ago, earlier on, when she was a youngin, I imagine that. So we're a port city too. But a lot of your port cities definitely had, um, because you had a lot of the traffic of the military coming through and whatnot. So. Um, I guess think DC, think the naval yards in DC. Okay, so anyway, pioneer outside of New York refers to, like, and Kevin Kevin was speaking that the pioneer uh, title is uh, emphasizing the fact of some people their role in ballroom history was taking risks, and that's locally in New York. Outside of New York. The pioneer tag refers to people who were taking risks to um, bring that house and Vogue ballroom structure to expand it outside of New York, okay? And in Chicago, it was particularly hard because Chicago historically has been a, this is pageant territory, okay? which is probably like the opposite of New York. New York balls actually end up becoming more popular than pageants. Chicago is a whole lot different. Chicago, we had a hard time trying to establish a 
ball community because excuse me because um we were competing with the pageants our femme queens or drag queens or female impersonator performers would much rather compete in a pageant get money and 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 prizes and things like that than they were to take a risk um, and investing in investing their time in this new phenomenon that was kind of foreign to them of a ball unless they had actually gone to New York or whatever and kind of seen what it was about so there was that challenge but we still managed to get a ballroom started and there's also this controversy about when Chicago was ballroom started when we speak of 1986 being the starting point for Chicago's ballroom we have, we use that date because that is where the first house was formed because prior to that mind you I've already stated that there already were drag balls going on in Chicago but when we started using the Harlem ballroom format developing houses and um, see, developing houses and uh, and vogue introducing voguing we had a hard row to toe and that that makes us pioneers those that were there in the beginning that makes us pioneers because we were the ones that were going through the discrimination of not even allowed to be gay in a gay bar okay so I mean we, we in other clips video clips I mean I, I can just think of my my brother Tommy avant-garde who actually was one of the co one of the co-founders of the house avant-garde talking about how we would go to clubs and we would have our costumes and our little gigs on and whatever and people were actually so upset and jealous with us they would spill their drinks on us or try to burn our outfits with cigarettes this outfit not something we bought at the store stuff we actually took the time out to actually create and make showing our creativity and displaying our sense of style and this is how we were received uh, so with this dance voguing in Chicago setting it was except it was totally rejected because in Chicago there was a strict code of behavior for gay men if you were going to be any way effeminate you could not present yourself as a boy you were herded into the category of oh you're a feminine whether naturally or whatever you're gonna start wearing you're gonna start being in drags and even with some of the actual city laws, when they started sanctioning these events, well, the, the drag balls before the Vogue balls came along were sanctioned. The city had to allow them, and they only allowed them at certain times of the year. In Chicago, it would have been Halloween um, and possibly and New Year's. I believe New York, prior to them adopting their house and Vogue ball culture, those drag balls uh, were um, relegated to Thanksgiving, I want to say. Um, and also, mind you, too, that people were traveling from city to city, talking about state to state these days. They had state to state back then because people would have, okay, so people knew about the different drag ball that were going around the, the, the country. So if like, oh, if you prepared and got your outfit together for the big Chicago shindig and you didn't win anything, you might go to take that, all that work and effort and try your, your luck at a New York drag ball, okay? But anyway, so when we talk about Chicago's ball history timeline starting, we are speaking of when Chicago finally adopted the, the, the structure of, of creating houses and introducing voguing, okay? And that would have been 86 because that's when the House of Avant-Garde was formed. I didn't join Avant-Garde till 89 because that's not, I didn't discover voguing or any of that stuff until about 89. 
and then became a member of the house. And then we had to have years of, of exhibition and, 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 and acclimating the community at large, predominantly the nightclub community. We had to um, educate them about this voguing and this house thing or whatever, until finally in 91, we were able to find a sponsor and throw an actual ball. Now, some people will consider, uh, in New York also, they had the love ball, that's when the fashion industry got involved and adopted this already cultural phenomenon that was kind of underground. But now they took it downtown, I guess, in New York. And the fashion industry used it as a way of raising money for AIDS. That would be DIFFA, the D-I-F-F-A. Uh, I'm not sure what those initials stand for, but it's pretty much the fashion industry, their response to the AIDS epidemic, okay? In Chicago, some people took that uh, cue and came up with the Chicago Vogers Ball, which was like Chicago's, I would say like the fashion industry and retail industry or whatever, using the, the, the New York Love Ball format and trying to have something like that here as a fundraiser. But I still would not consider that a ball when you're speaking of houses and voguing format that was not that time type of function as a matter of fact the house of avant-garde would not get a chance to even compete at that but no we never competed at that function we basically gave an exhibition at the second chicago vogers ball um i think the first vogers ball they hired people from like they hired, hired members from the house of extravaganza from New York, they knew that New York, oh, we're having people from New York come here, that, that would be a draw. So they hired, for the first one, they hired people from New York, House of Extravaganza, and had them do like an exhibition. I didn't attend that function, so I can't speak of that. But the second one, the House of Avant-Garde got a chance. By that time, we were known in nightlife, and so when they were trying to have this Vogers Ball, they decided to have house of avant-garde do an exhibition okay because so we basically represented the actual legitimateness of what they were trying to do the rest of it was pretty much just pomp and circumstances just different businesses sponsoring groups that did these presentations but it wasn't set up like a ball where you have you introduce the celebrities of the ballroom and then you have categories that they compete in. And then, you know, the judges come up to a um, city, are sitting in the front and uh, the, the contestants are competing in, a, in an aisle or a runway down the middle. That's not how that was set up. So I don't count that as a, uh, I would count that in the ball history line altogether, but that's if you're starting to include the drag balls and all that. But what I'm speaking of is the house ball voguing balls, ballroom community. That would have started in 86 for Chicago, just for the fact that a house was formed. It doesn't matter that the ball, that they didn't actually get to throw a function until, let's see, 86, until five years later, it's still, 86 would mark the beginning of it. So also, for example, in, in Atlanta, I'm not an expert on it, just did, did bits and pieces that I picked up. In Atlanta, Atlanta, I know, was voguing a whole lot longer than before Chicago was, okay? But I think Chicago managed to actually throw a ball before Atlanta did. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm, from all the little bits and pieces I've been able to put together, that's a distinction I want to make too. Atlanta had voguing going on in their clubs. Whatever Chicago, we had a little struggle with trying to get even voguing started first because we weren't even allowed to. The bars didn't want us voguing. Well, and also too, we were doing kick routines and stuff. And of course, balls, lim, bar, bars had limited space and whatnot. But um, 
yeah, that was another part of our struggle. So just developing and trying to get the, the, the development of Chicago ballroom scene going took pioneering. Because if you think about the true sense of a pioneer, a pioneer was someone that as the country, United States, was expanding and heading west, expanding west, pushing out the indigenous people. Okay, you had to actually go into the wilderness, chop down the trees, make a house, and, 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 and defend yourself from the natives, not the natives, excuse me, that's, that's a bad phrase, but defend yourself from the indigenous people, which in a sense, really, you were, you were usurping upon their territory. So, you, of course, you know there's going to be conflict. Then you had to break the ground down. You had to try to, to make the ground ready to be able to plant food and, 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 and raise cattle and think, all that. That's pioneering. Pioneering is when you get there before anybody else does. And pioneering can even be like in, in the gentrification process where you have people who, which gay people tend to do that. We'll move into a dangerous neighborhood, start planting flowers, and start, you know, whatever. Then the real estate people catch wind, and then they start saying, ooh, this area is going to be up and coming. The next thing you know, you're pushing the poor people out. Okay, that's another subject too. So all I'm really trying to say is, I started this video because I wanted to talk about what pioneering, or what pioneer, what that phrase or title meant outside of the Chicago, I mean, outside of the New York, uh, city limits as far as ballroom goes because I think Kevin did an excellent job explaining what it meant as far as the attachment of that to the phrase of icon for the New York area I just wanted to expound upon it to to let people know that pioneering outside of New York basically meant the struggles or the people who were involved in the early struggles of trying to get the Harlem drag house and vogue structure of balls established in their cities and I thank you.